Hello my fellow riders and welcome back to Riding Reviews. Today we are going to be looking at the MGB A9. Now today we are going to be looking at the Moto GB a9 budget scooter now we're going to do this a similar way to what we normally do spec design cost of riding and there will be a test ride at the end of this video i will be giving you my personal opinion on this bike so stay tuned for that spec now this bike uh, has the discs on the front it has a drum on the back and they are combined braking for the Euro 5 specification LED indicators LED rear lights H4 3535 front lights and there are two of them I don't know if they're 35 but they are H4s comes with a center stand a side stand it doesn't have USB charging on this one Power output, you should be looking at about 7 to 8 horsepower. This isn't going to be the fastest scooter out there. It does have a GY6 derived engine, but obviously it's not a GY6 Honda engine, but it's similar to some of the other motorbikes out there at the minute, or scooters. doesn't produce as much power as, say, the um, Motorini Misano. Looking top speed on this one, I did a test ride and you'll see that later on. But you're looking around 50, 55 at a push. Downhill is going to go faster, uphill it is going to go slower. It does have the dual shocks on the back and standard shocks on the front. As I said before, it is combined braking. That means that when you pull your uh, front brake, 25% of the pressure goes to the back. Design. Now this bike, or this shell of this bike, has been around for many, many years. Uh, there's a lot of different companies out there that brought them out previously. They stopped doing them. MGB has decided to bring in a budget range of their um, motorbikes. So, MGB is a massive importer of motorbikes. They do many, many different models, but this is something that they're bringing in on their own. But it is an older model. And it really and truthfully, it does look like an older model. Again, I'm going to go back to the Motorini Masano because it's in the similar sort of price range to this bike. If you ask me, that one looks a lot better. You can get a back rack for this, they don't come as standard. There is one major redeeming feature on this bike that quite a lot of other scooters nowadays can't do. Now this is a Tuzo standard large helmet and it just about fits. You can lock the seat and it does just about sit there is a little bit of weight on the top of your helmet but this is this is fine most other scooters nowadays you cannot fit a helmet in a little bit tight so yeah it is a retro designed scooter the shell has been around for many years the only thing that has really changed over the last say eight nine years is this one is electronically fuel injected where all the previous ones would have been carbureted. It does have analog clocks. Again, they're trying to keep the clocks, uh, the cost down, but it is in miles per hour. It does have kilometers an hour underneath, but like the taco is in miles per hour. And it has a fuel gauge. Engine management light indicator indicators, and that's about it. Cost of riding. This bike will come with two years warranty and the purchase price on this is £1,799 plus whatever the company you purchase it from's OTR is. Uh, tax on this, your first year comes within your OTR but the second year's tax at the minute is £21. Servicing costs on this, you should be looking about one to two services a year 
at CBRS it's about £70 to get this serviced other places do charge quite a bit more so depending on where you go you can be charged upwards of £120 so just shop around a little bit usually people that sell um, Lex Motos are probably the best place to get service because they're usually quite good with their prices if you go to Honda, Kawasaki, um, any of the, the so-called Japanese makes or importers or, or places like that, you're looking at at least a hundred plus pound an hour and then plus parts. So, yeah. So we'll have a little bit of a test ride. This is only going to be a short test ride. I will upload the full test ride so that you can see it on a separate video. But this one is just going to be a short one. So let's go there.
Sorry for the farting sound. That's somebody's car. They think it sounds cool, but it sounds poo. Right, so I did say that I would give you my personal opinion on this bike. I don't like it. That's my personal opinion. Some people might agree. Some people might not. Um, now, let me explain why I don't like it. Number one is the shell on this, as I said, has been got around for many, many years. Lots of different companies have imported them in the UK and stopped doing them. The suspension on this one is very, very soft. So a couple of times when you're going down the road, I felt it bottoming out on the side stand. It doesn't hit the ground, but you can hear it hitting the side stand. It's very, very soft on the old suspension, which I will show you. So when you are um, riding, you're going to be able to feel all the bumps on the road because of that. You can adjust these slightly and put it onto a, a slightly firmer um, suspension, but it's not going to make that much difference. So your, your ride quality and your ride stability is going to be a little bit off-putting because of this. The other one, the MGB Fantasy, has a similar issue to this one, but it's not quite the same. So the MGB Fantasy, the suspension is too short on that one. And so what I found on that one is when you go around the corners fairly sharpish, the center stand uh, hits the road and sparks. And that's on turning left or right. So you need, to, if you're going to buy an MGB Fantasy, you need to buy extenders for the suspension because it would make it a much safer bike the other problem that i had is when i was turning around the corner because it's scraping on the floor you can't turn as sharply as you normally would uh, which means that if you calculate it wrong you're going to turn on the other side of the road and it, it becomes a big old hoo-ha so yeah if you are going to be buy an mgb fantasy make sure that you get the suspension extenders now, the last reason why I'm not too keen on this bike is because the price is £1,799. Now, you can get the Motorini Misano 125cc for £1,849. That is £50 more than you would pay for this one, but you are getting a lot for your £50. So, yeah, if you're going to go in for the budget bike, really and truthfully... I would avoid this one and go for the Motorini Masano 125cc instead. Now, I'm sure you've seen some more of my videos in the past, and I don't lightly say that I do not recommend a bike. Um, all bikes have good parts, all bikes have bad parts. This one I would say try and avoid because of... Um, you can get something much better for not a lot more. And again, this is my personal opinion you don't like it that is absolutely fair enough comment below and tell me why you didn't like it and then we can work on that in the future so hopefully you've enjoyed this video and hopefully i have informed you of my personal opinion on this one um it's not gospel it's not something that you have to take fully do your own research look into it yourself if you want to buy this bike go right ahead but you have my opinion so thank you for watching my video. As I say, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hit that thumbs up, comment below if you didn't like the video and tell me how I can make them better in the future. Join my channel to support riding reviews if you are that way inclined. But as always, ride safe.